Welcome folks to Echoes of Mana. Let's see if I can put this game on full screen. Yes. Okay, that you should see the game better now. So let's talk about damage. How can you improve your characters? How can you deal damage? Let's go into the allies section and I will explain to you a little bit of what I've learned so far. Now, I don't think guides in the first month when a game uh, releases, it, they're, 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 we're not going to be able to tell how things actually work. Even if you grind to the top, uh, so some mechanics are still unknown. So let's get into the ally section. And by the way, you should totally reroll. That, that's a subject for another video. Until you get what you desire, I recommend you reroll for sumo, and so that takes care of the healing because honeycomb is good, but you will see later why it is not that good for now. For now. You can change the weapon, but I have no other weapons. Probably later on in the game there will be a feature where you can change the weapons, which will change how the characters behave. But you can see there are stats here. Strength, Intelligence, Spirit, like th these are very self-explanatory. I don't think you need any guide to understand them. So the first thing you need to do to power up your character is to level up his mana board. Now, each of these are important. I don't think the f fighters are good it's a good idea to level up the mana and the, i mean mana yes but intelligence not sure so let's level up strength we have enough materials for another upgrade and that increase our strength by 30 which brings us to 300 308 that is good also let's increase our physical defense constitution let's do that cool he's upgraded we cannot upgrade anything else maybe nope maybe just mp Oh, we already have that. Uh, sure. Now this is gonna cost me. Why do you not want me to unlock? Okay. And that's how you uh, upgrade your character. Be very selective in the beginning because you don't, unless you wanna farm every day for the same character. So be very selective. Think about what you wanna do with the character and upgrade his relevant skills. And this skills will unlock every. 10 level I believe, yes, 40, 50, 60, 70, so you need to level up your character in order to make him uh, stronger. Another way to increase your character is by using the unleash. Now some people like to use dupes to um, awaken characters, I think you should consider unleashing because unleashing not only increase your skills, they become more powerful, it increases your level cap and also it doesn't tell you here but it increased the stats of your character so having a plus six character is going to make him very powerful so keep that in mind that that's why you need to summon in this game i didn't summon because i don't want to summon right now and there's a reason for that i believe the game just came out so they might add something for the summoning so why i don't need to summon right now when i need to summon i will summon for now i don't Awakening, I still have not unlocked that that feature, so I cannot speak on that. Ascension will simply let you le unlock the level cap. That's nothing you should worry about until you hit the level cap. So, next, we've got the um, gear section. Now, gear section is pretty, mu pretty much like Genshin Impact if you've played that game. You have a set bonus, you need three pieces to get the set bonus. And each item is randomized. So let's go here. I have this um, piece of armor that gives me 2.3% of HP. The main stat is always going to be constitution for this item. So it doesn't change. But the bonus stat do change. So you may want to farm the dungeon. Which you unlock after chapter 3. And see there are different stats. So it's pretty much like Genshin you keep... Um, farming for these items until you basically find the item you want. So this is intelligence MP. So this gauntlet for instance is very useless because it's on a warrior and intelligence is not very very good. Strength could be good but then I will lose the set effect. And then there are these things, these are accessories I still love. I found them on my previous um, run and now I reroll so obviously I did not have them yet you should be able to see them uh, when you complete hard quests on uh, the third chapter and hard quests not normal hard and on the fourth chapter 
so that's one thing when you upgrade these items when you take this to say level 4 with increments of 4 they gain a bonus stats and you need to basically farm these items to get the best bonus stats for your character that being said let's get to the next section which is very important this is the strategy okay let's say let's say you're bal you're fine with being balanced let's say i want you to be a dps if i click here i can tell the ai what to do so closest enemy means i don't care what you do i'm gonna attack the the, the monster who's close to me the closer to me same enemy as play i recommend this one because if you want to focus down on the healer you all your AIs will focus on the same target. You have to either attack the target or select the target. The tactics is how the AI will behave. Healer means the AI will focus more on healing. It gives more priority to healing. They still attack, but they are very um, mindful of using healing skills. Damage healing obviously is more like go all in, or use all, all your mana on uh, attacks and support is for buffs self-explanatory really so this guy is going to be a damage dealer special technique you can tell them to use or not use the special technique which is the um, sword icon down there skills do you want to use the skills they consume mana so yes use them of course switch playable ally that means they switch with their sub ally Obviously, you keep all, basically the only thing you need to modify are these two things. So that's it. So let's say you use Onicomp, all right. Actually, let's say you use this one because Onicomp has only two spells and they're all healings. One is a AOE heal, and the other is a status removal. So you want this guy. This guy has um, a cure and heroic shield. Assume even let's assume this was an attack skill. If I went here and use balance basically he will juggle the MP between curing and damage dealing if I switch to healer he will focus more on using his MP to heal thus he will just auto attack more and that's the way you increase your damage another way that you probably might have noticed but not so much we're gonna talk about that later let's go to the memory gem section this is pretty much your vision card section for world of the vision and it, 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 they just boost the um, your character stats. So when you have these things, let's say I have this one, it gives me strength, constitution, intelligence, speed because I, I've upgraded it. I recommend picking up uh, vision gems. I mean, <laughs> visions, memory gems that will help your character. So look at the stats and look at the age skill, recovery amount plus thirty percent. Okay. And then you can level up this card. When you reach level 20, if I can reach, let's see, can I reach level 20? Yes. At level 20, this should increase your um, your skill there, I think. No, get bonus stat from level 30. That's because you get a bonus stat there. I don't care. I don't want to waste them, so that's why. But you, know, you need to level up these things. I have noticed after level 20 that the stats you gain are just minor so see only two points if i go below it's a lot as you can see i think it's yeah i think it's on increases of 10 yeah 11 and that yeah so that's how you increase the damage of your uh, characters using the memory gems now one thing you need to understand is yeah shut up i know that is the spirit magic if you use dupes of a certain memory gem, you can increase your spirit magic and also the level of the card. So this increases the skill. As you can see now we have 30, 40, 45. We need two more to get the, the best magic skill available. The magic skill level, the spirit magic level is basically the strength on your, of your final move, the one that blinks here. So it adds to the level of the skill. So I've got three spirit magic here. I've got probably three over there and four over there, so keep that in mind. Uh, do we have anything else here to showcase? No. So some of the cards are not that great. But you should definitely pay attention to this uh, memory gem section. 
and one other thing you can do to increase is if you go to, to party you will notice that as soon as the game gives me some credibility come on you will see that we have a 20% bonus here now this is basically pairing up your allies with the same element I've tested out it doesn't matter if you have two four six so go for two um, there's not a cumulative bonus for having like four elements of the same type but you need to pair these guys with the same element alright and they get a boost to their um, to their effectiveness I think it's based on I don't know it, it's weird sometimes it's 30% sometimes it's 20% I don't particularly know how that works I figured it had to do with like your rarity but I uh, again I, I, I just don't know I don't want to say things you should fiddle around but this will this is a good increase like you can get up to 30% I managed to get to 30% up maybe if I switch these guys let's try switching them up and you will see what I mean so let's say you go in here go back see 30% I don't know what causes it but it's 30% increase very good you can use that to your advantage to maximize the potential of your team now another thing I want to show you and for that I need to switch you for you so first of all if you wanna boost your damage do not use boomerangs boomerangs are just bad okay let, let me tell they're slow yes they eat they, they go through enemies I don't care usually about that because enemy tends to bunch up and you can hit multiple of them with spears weapons and things so boomerangs are just no <laughs> just no I don't care what anyone says I've tried boomerangs I don't like them they're super bad okay next we need to go into let's go into an event so I can show actually yeah let's try to do a, a boss so I can so I can actually is that a s I do not have a boss right now here yeah, I need to go faster I need to go further down this uh, this road so let's just do a training quest let's say we're gonna go do the gear dungeon we're gonna do the first one because 3.5 I'm not there solo battle we're gonna try to use this one gloves gloves and knives are very very important and you will see why in a moment this is another way to improve the damage obviously you need to pay attention to the weakness of the enemies their elements so that's another thing and the weapon selection is very important now I'll show you why now boomerangs bad I, I don't care they're, they're, just, they're just too slow <coughs> ineffectual I don't care now I have purposefully switched my archer for the monk now the good thing about gloves okay if you cannot get hit is they are good for raising the combo because ooh, you have to dodge see when you get hit you lose your combo meter so you need to be careful you need to manually play this one but ooh, just just right no I'm not good enough at dodging so when you, anyway what I wanted to say was basically by hitting enemies and not getting hit increases your combo meter and every 10 combos you get a damage bonus of um, 5% so a 10 combo is basically plus 5% damage 20 combos are 10% damage and so forth so obviously this is useful for using this ability we have a 29 combo as you can see the damage is 25% so it maximizes your damage potential if you use it correctly we have a 63 combo we are doing so much damage now and someone decided to get hit but it wasn't my main character so it's fine so as long as your main character doesn't get hit the combos will keep going of course you need to be fast and keep shooting the enemies I have 98 hit combo that's almost 50% damage so that's the way you increase your damage and now with that damage you could well now we change but I could unleash this one and basically um, do a lot of damage I recommend you do that by using a range attacker I mean if you're good at dodging you should definitely be using um, the monk 
or the, the knife class, whatever it is. 34 hit combo, 37, let's go with the damage. And look at that, 20% damage, 25%, that's a lot of damage by the way. Let's dodge up because I don't want my archer to take damage. And that's the way you deal damage. Obviously if you use an archer you're gonna go with high combo counts because he's not gonna be in the midst of the fight. So it doesn't matter if the other two guys get hit, your combo meter doesn't get reset. Keep that in mind, that's very important. And that really increases your damage. Alright. So, those are the ways you can increase damage that I know right now. I don't know if later there will be a feature that I will unlock. But it's definitely the way to increase damage. Wow, what a fantastic item. Okay. So, other things, let's see. Um, yeah, using the right characters. Some characters are just not that great. Alright. I tried Duffel. Duffel, I don't know, she has a lot of strength, but the damage doesn't seem that impressive. Unless she does the Duffel Tornado, in which case she just obliterates everything. But yeah, you try to pick characters that are actually good. Okay, you need the balance, you need someone that heals. And that's something for another video, like I said. But try to have people who actually do damage. So, Honeycomb is bad because you cannot pair him with anything. So far, unless, until they release another Dawn, is it Dawn? No, it's Luna. It's either Luna or Moon. He's a Luna or Moon heroes. I, I don't remember. There's only one of him and there is no one to pair him with, so he doesn't get the boost. Also, he doesn't have any offensive spell. He only has a good skill that's... It is what it is. And so, try not to use him. He is very strong, but right now, without a boost, without anything, he should be in the back line. You should take him out only to drop that AOE heal, then switch back to your um, main character. That's it. But I wouldn't use him. So I will reroll for this guy. You get him with a ticket you can summon. And I will reroll until you get it. Because he has a cure, he's a single target AOE. No, sorry, single target cure. He does damage, he's a tank, he's everything. Okay. Alternatively, if you don't want to get yourself jibbated by the gacha system and reroll forever, you can keep drawing again the third, the three star character they give you at the beginning so you get Charlotte. She's basically similar to this guy but she's obviously a three star not a four star. So that's everything I have to say for the damage and how to improve it. Obviously the game has just came out, just, just came out one week ago or maybe two weeks ago I don't know, don't remember. So it's still early to draw conclusions but these are the things I noticed and very important, if, if anything, try to pair your heroes with the same element for the team. So party member 1, party member 2 and party leader go in couples. Anyway, that's everything. If you have questions, drop them down in comments and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.